Pro tip, mix sticks. It is amazing. You put a little bit of wax on the blade and uh, it'll really help any cuts that you're doing. It's pretty much the best way to uh, lubricate a dry blade like this. Got a bunch of steel there from our local industrial metal supply. If you have one around, they're awesome. Cut it in half and then I'm gonna cut the tenons and plates for all the dies I've been making. This is why companies charge you a lot of money for these because this was about $500 worth of steel and you have to have the time and machinery and know-how in order to make them. This is only step one in order to gang them up and cut the smaller plates. Probably going to take another two hours just to cut the plates and then I'll have to come over to my milling machine and mill the uh, tenons uh, at about a five degree angle so they lock in in the quick change die system. And after that, I'm gonna have to go over to the welding shop and weld them together. And that's just for the die plates. That's not even for uh, the actual dies themselves. Then I have to go probably to my shop and actually line up the dies and get them set exactly where I want them. And uh, as you guys saw before, the other night I posted a uh, Instagram it's like my, all my dies in there that I've made so far. I'm gonna probably radius some of them today and then uh, get them ready. And I might get to Damascus today and I might get to it um, you know, a little later or maybe tomorrow, we'll see. I did chop up some thin, uh, fit, uh, thin 1095. This is another kind of pro tip. Um, some of us you know, wanna make medium count, low count and also high count Damascus. Well, a lot of the steel suppliers will sell this in, um, you know, maybe eighth inch thick at the thinnest for 1095. Or if you go to Admiral Steel, you can order shim stock. So uh, yeah, I didn't get anything done I wanted to do, but sometimes you gotta do the necessary shit in order to do what you wanna do later. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So recently you may have seen, I've been making and working on some hydraulic forging press dies to make my 16 ton coal ironworks forging press more versatile. The, the press itself works amazing. I couldn't recommend it more. It, it's like a lifesaver. It makes everything faster. The thing that can make it even faster is if you change out the dies and you have multiple different operations. So you can use squaring dies to make crushed W's or to square up a canister Damascus or um, for multiple things. So uh, maybe a ladder pattern die. Anyway, so I made all those dies and now I have to hold them and put them in and out of my machine. Andy over at Coal Ironworks hooked me up recently with a uh, the quick change die upgrade kit. It, it was it was beautiful. It works really well. You just um, you tap the pre existing hole that's already there, and uh, with I think a five eighths eleven, and then you can either use a set screw or they have these handles, and it's it's great. It works great. The problem is I had the old system that had this hole and a pin, and now um, well the uh, 5 8 set screw will still go into this and work it doesn't it, you have to kind of turn it a whole bunch to get it in and out and change these out so it doesn't really make it quick change until you upgrade to their quick change dies and um if i were you i would just go buy them from them and call andy at coal ironworks um and they'll hook you up i'm stupid i'm a machinist i over complicate everything and i always think i can do it myself here it is like 11 o'clock at night i'm doing a video on how dumb i am for doing it myself but I've done it myself and I'm gonna show you how I did it and how much work it actually takes to do this kind of stuff. And that's why they're priced how they are on their website. Um, actually, I don't think it's a bad price at all. Uh, $200 for a set of dies or $300 for a set of dies is, is super reasonable, especially when you think about how much metal's involved and time, you know, making, machining the metal. So first of all, about it. So this is the old style die plate. It had a pin. The new style die plate is more like this. It, it basically, it has just a plate and then you need a, your tenon. The tenon will have to have an angle cut on it and that's kind of the tricky part. So that angle, the set screw will go into that. I guess I could show it like this. Set screw will go into that and because it's at an angle, it won't slip out. And that kind of makes it brilliant. If you did it without this angle, like if you went to this side and just did the flat, it'll just mar up and it, it'll gall it and it'll mess it up. So you don't want to do that. So you actually want the angle. It'll lock it in place and keep everything solid. The trick is cutting that type of an angle. 
I uh, talked to Andy today at Coal Iron, Ironworks and he recommended or he told me that they usually use a four degree angle and I think that's probably a good idea but uh, you know, I don't know. I've been doing tool and die maker for a long time and a machinist, R&D machinist for a long time. And I've really seen that, you know, you don't need much of an angle to create a locking pin mechanism like this. So I went with a two degree angle and that's because it's gonna allow me to cut uh, less deep every time I face cut. And the way I set up the face cutting operation here, I'm gonna be cutting like 12 of them at a time. So I wanna take big passes on it and I just have this like smaller bridge port to, to do it on. So I don't really have a high horsepower machine. So I don't wanna to waste too much time um, taking multiple small cuts. So I decided to go for something that would be rigid enough, but also would, be, um, would work in the operation, but allow me to do it a little bit faster. In retrospect, I probably just should have set them all up individually and cut them one at a time. But you know, I overcomplicate everything. So let's take a look at, at what I actually built for this and, and how I did it. So um, I'm gonna roll you a little closer here. And sorry for the shaky camera. So here's what we got. We've got a plate. And this plate, I cut a bunch of different angles in. Now this plate is gonna have all those tenons stacked on it and it's gonna go in my mill. And this big um, face cutter here, with I think it's like a, a six, yeah, six uh, octagonal, which is really strong anyway. It's going to fly cut or face cut all of these to that same angle, and then I'll have 12 of them done. And so every time I wanna do that, I'll just be able to set pieces of metal in here and knock them out. To start, you have to cut them to about the right size and then mill both sides so they're at a known size. So that way when they sit in your plate, you just have a little bit to shave off the top. That's the idea. How did I make this plate? With a really awesome sign bar my uncle uh, gifted me a long time ago. He uh, was a retired tool and die maker, and this is a tool that he made. And uh, I really love using tools from family and friends because uh, I feel like I'm connected to them every time I'm using them. It, it's a great feeling. Um, it's like they're here in the shop with me telling me how to do it better. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna set this up, and I'm gonna put in the vise here on these parallels. And uh, we're gonna take a couple passes and see how it goes. And then I'm gonna go home and eat some dinner. So I just, you know, plate goes on the parallel. This isn't a super critical operation. You wanna make sure it's all clean again. Um, because, you know, these tendons, they don't have to be precise and they're not gonna be like locking together in a repeatable way. It's just, they all gotta be the same um, or close to the same. So that way, you know, your dies change out interchangeably pretty easily. So I'm just gonna set these in here. It's pretty much three per line, and uh, I've got four lines, so that makes 12. Uh, math is hard. And uh, this way, like I said, if I wanna do you know, a bunch of dies for somebody or more dies in the future, I can always knock these out pretty easily, and uh, it won't be a big deal. So there's, uh, there's nine, 10, 11, and 12. So as you can see, it fits pretty nicely in here. Um, you know, just push them up. It's not the end of the world. Now, one tip or one trick is if I just shut this die, uh, I mean this vise on on these, it it might it might work, but one of them might be a slightly different size, or there might be a burr in there, and it might cause uh, another one not to be locked in all the way and come flying out when we're doing our cutting operation. And th that's no good because you know these safety glasses they're really nice, but this is a heavy piece of metal, and if it comes flying out at you. It's gonna break parts of your cutter and break parts of your face. So you don't want that to happen. How do we prevent that? Well, we use a softer material like aluminum and a little bar of it's perfect because it just has a tangent to touch it. And so we'll squish it in there and it'll deform slightly and it'll fill in any, in, any differences and it'll create a nice strong hold. And um, I'm not just making this up, I already did it earlier. I already cut these earlier the same way. So I know it works. So we're gonna put that in here. push down on it, lock it in. Like I said, it's not, it's not super critical. Make sure everything's tamped down. Um, now let's uh, move you guys closer to the action. Cause this is the fun part. Yeah, there we go. That'll look good. So I've got this big old cutter here. You can see all those octagonal uh, inserts. 
The inserts are pretty expensive, but they're cool because they have a bunch, since it's an octagon, they have eight different cutting edges and then you can flip them around. So really 16 cutting edges per insert. So you get a lot of life out of them, a lot of use out of them. And um, they're not super sharp. They are sharp, but they, um, they're they more meant for harder mil milling. So like milling steel. So this will work out great. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and hopefully in like one or two passes, I'll be able to clean this whole thing up and we'll have some tenons done and I can go home. So here we go. We're gonna turn it on probably around, oh, I don't know. I could run this faster on another machine, like if it was a CNC, but uh, on this machine, I'm gonna run it around 650, 700. Come over, slowly come down. Oh, there we go, we're on. There's our first cut, come around, that just, uh, you know, quickly set our depth. And uh, so I'm gonna raise the knee and I'm gonna see if I can get away with uh, maybe going for, I don't know, 50 thousandths at a time. It's kind of a big cut, but this is a strong cutter. It should be able to handle it. So let's see. Oh, that's about 50. going a little fast anyway um, I think I tightened it already yeah I tightened it Let's come back this way shoot some hot chips in my face uh, I guess I'll show you guys from this angle now It cuts right through it, no big deal. That's what I'm talking about. So now you can see kind of why I ended up going with the three degree or the two degree, because I could cut almost all this at once. With the uh, the four degree, I had to make multiple passes, and uh, so basically I wasted my whole day, so I could waste time more efficiently. Yeah, I know it's a problem. Last kind of pass here. You know, bam, no big deal. It just takes it like a beast. So at the end we have all those pieces flattened out and since they're sitting at those angles they will now be uh, like that like my little tenon and then we can put our set screw in there and we can hold it in so yeah thanks for watching or not watching or whatever um, 12 minutes is like one of the longest videos I've ever done and I rambled through the whole thing and I'm just gonna post it on Instagram TV and uh, Facebook too so, no, not Facebook. I don't do Facebook. Fuck Facebook. Um, yeah, fuck you, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, <laughs> just joking. I have nothing against you, Mark. Please don't, like, kill my baby. I don't have babies. Nice try, Mark. Hi. Can I just ruin that whole video right now?